Carl, tell us, from Thursday night Barack Obama makes the formal acceptance speech to today, when we have the revelations about Bristol Palin, well, John and I have been trying to put this in a context of the most momentous five days. Yeah. Where, where does this fall, just in terms of raw political news out there in Europe? Well, opinion? look, in, in, in today's media culture, there is no equivalent of it. But in terms of the greater scheme of things, look, there, this, this is um, the speech I thought on, on uh, Thursday was a memorable venue. But I think the speech fell short. I think it was. I think this was a, you know, a, a, a speech that did, was not worthy of the venue. And it will be while well, an eminently memorable venue will be an eminently forgettable speech. Uh, what but an historic moment. It was an historic moment. The moment of you know America nominating an African American, fresh face, newcomer as the nominee of a major political party is an historic comment. And uh, and then we have uh, Palin on Friday. Which uh, took the re took uh, everybody by surprise and the Republican Party by storm, and then we have speaking of storms, Gustav, which punctuates and uh, you know lets the air out of the first day of the Republican convention. How do you make it up if you're advising McCain? You, you lose a day of infomercial. Uh, does that matter, or does he score? It, it, because it, of the it does matter. I mean, step back and take a look at all conventions. There are they, they serve a strategic purpose and a tactical purpose. The strategic purpose is they help you frame up the election define your opponent and most important of all define yourself and your agenda and you have essentially the four official days of the convention the two or three days leading into the convention and a day after it so you have essentially seven or eight days to do it now he had a good friday and he had a good saturday and then on sunday the information flow started to squeeze down it'll squeeze down even more today it'll squeeze down i suspect a little bit until we become uh... aware of the reality uh... behind uh, gustav but potentially it could begin to widen back up on the most important nights of the convention, Wednesday and Thursday, when more people tune in and they get to know more and see more of the vice presidential and presidential candidate because they themselves are on the stage. Now, did you know uh, in advance about Governor Palin? Were you surprised that she was the pick? And what do you make of, again, we're 72 or 96 hours into it, but what do you make yeah. of the pick? Well, I know every, this is an intensely personal decision for a presidential candidate, and the list is much larger than we would have ever hoped. And in this instance, you know, there were a couple of early mentions of her as a prospect on big, long lists. But clearly, this is a very personal decision that gives us an insight into the nature of John McCain. What do you think it tells us about McCain that he seemed to feel this instant simpatico with her to pick her on very yeah. little face time? Yeah. Um, McCain is somebody who makes gut instincts about people. We also know that McCain is somebody who is focused on sort of the big symbolic thing. And the big symbolic thing here is Maverick, not afraid to take on the good old boy network. I mean, I think there was, you can see the sympathetic view he'd have of her stepping up and saying, you know what, I'm on the oil and, I'm chairman of the Oil and Gas Commission, but I think this stinks. And if you're not going to do something about it, Mr. Attorney General, appointed by our governor, and you're not going to do something about it, governor, I'm out of here. I mean, you can just see how that would appeal to McCain. And then getting in the Republican primary against a guy who served, what was it, four terms in the United States mm -hmm. Senate, Since one term as governor, right? and then was saying, okay, I'm going to take on this guy in the Republican primary because I have strong convictions about reform instincts about the way our state is going, and I don't care, nobody's going to be able to dissuade me from this. You can see how this would appeal to McCain's sense of both reform and honor mm -hmm. and courage. There seems to be a big split. Republicans seem generally, I don't want to speak for every Republican, Republicans seem generally happy, cer certainly the base of the party is excited about this pick. Democrats cast this pick privately, they don't do it as much publicly, as a gift. That, that Sarah Palin is the modern day Dan Quayle, that this is a disaster for the party. Do Democrats run the risk of overplaying this hand? Look, they overplayed it from the first moment. When they put out that statement bashing her, this was the, look, this is every woman. This is, you know, the mom, successful small business operator, union member, uh, uh, outdoors woman, uh, coach, mom of five, you know, active in her community, and then takes on the big boys and becomes governor. And they were on a real risk of looking condescending, just as they did. The same crowd played these cards against Hillary Clinton, and it, and it was a mistake. Uh, they would be best not focusing on it as well, because, look, their fundamental issue is she is unqualified to be president because you've only been governor for two years. Well, I don't think there's a huge qualitative and quantitative difference between governor for two years and senator for four, except she's got executive experience and he hasn't. And she spent the last two years serving as governor, 
He spent the last two years running for the for the presidency of the United States. I, the more they get into this, the worse off they are. They would be better to focus back on McCain and let this whole issue of the vice president die down. This is a positive thing for McCain. It was a bold move, but it's also a smart political move. Now, it's a different kind of a decision. Both candidates this year, ironically enough, made not a governing decision, but a campaign decision. Both of them principally said, I'm going to get somebody that I think, in the case of Obama, covers my weakness, and in the case of McCain, uh, plays to his strength. And, and Obama's part, it's to shore up working ca class Catholics, and in McCain's part, to say, I want to make inroads among soft Republicans in the suburbs and independent women and those Hillary supporters, male or female, that can be gotten by somebody who's a gun-toting, hockey-playing woman. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows the numbers better than you do. What does this pick do, in your best judgment at this point, to the general election map on November 4th? I think it gives McCain the ability to uh, add two or three points. Uh, nationally. Nationally. Hmm. Democrats especially have cast 2008 as a, uh, a reshaping of the map. Barack Obama has been on television in Alaska, Georgia, North Carolina, Montana. 2000 and 2004 both show that this is a very evenly divided country. Mm -hmm. uh, do you buy that 2008 we're going to look at? I know, this is a nice segue. Yeah, a nice segue into here. I, I had a nice, yeah, the long shot six, it made it in here. I think it's going to be hard for him to swipe Alaska, Georgia, Indiana, Montana, North Dakota, and Nebraska, which is where he's been running these ads. Uh, for example, in Montana, it would take a 20-point swing. Now, the question is, how often does that happen? And one way to look at this is to take all the elections since 1976, and then break them down so that each election is really 51 elections. It is 50 states plus the District of Columbia all have electoral college votes. So take 51 times seven elections and it's 357 individual state level mm -hmm. contests. And the question is, how often has there been a 20 point swing out of those 357 times? And it's happened exactly 12 times. Mm -hmm. We're ending eight years of two wars, uh, an up and down economy with two firsts, with Obama on the Democratic ticket, with Governor Palin on the uh, Republican ticket. What does that tell us about the demographics of the country, do you think, the culture of it? Yeah, um, y you know, America, I think, is, uh, the American uh, experience is always ahead of the American politics. Hmm. And uh, just as we've seen in the 80s and 90s, a dramatic growth in the diversity in the in our communities and a diversity in our corporate boardrooms and our diversity in every facet of our life as a country we're now seeing that reflected in our politics unusual i think except for nixon uh for a guy who lost eight years ago to come back and one of the things that i think is so admirable about mccain is his endurance and his his stick to itiveness yeah um would you have guessed in 2000 that he was going to keep fighting? Yes. But what I would not have guessed is after July of 2007 that he would have prevailed. I mean, uh, his campaign in, in the first seven months took every strength and turned it into weakness, amplified every weakness, blew up his supply dump, severed his uh, supply lines, yeah. and ironically enough, forced him back onto the only kind of campaign that he was capable of winning, which was this sort of guerrilla style outsiders reform campaign. So your guess was what we're nine weeks away today? Sixty five days. Sixty five days. So what's the what's the spread going to be that night nationally? You know, um, you'd have to say the advantages to Obama, but one of the things about this election is it's been so unpredictable and it's not in the place that it ought to be, and McCain is in a lot better place than he was a week or two weeks ago, and the fact that, uh, that Obama comes into his convention and drops, as he did in the first several days, and then gets a ordinary bounce. Yeah. And he should have gotten a larger bounce, and what he got was he got from roughly two up going into the convention to eight up today and my suspicion is by the end of the week that bounce is largely going to be winnowed away and we will find ourselves back in a in a race that's inside the margin of error and by next week may find ourselves in a place where it's tighter mccain has a has a, a lead and it's going to be right to the end a there are big questions about both of these candidates about mccain it is uh, can i count on mccain to be something different right. and on obama is it is he up to the job